And now I want to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to show you how to do assignment one. And I'm going to show you how to do assignment one in PyCharm because I want to show you how Python, how PyCharm works. And I want to show you how to do this work in PyCharm. Okay. So I'm going to switch to PyCharm. This is what PyCharm looks like. I'm sorry that I can't enlarge this uh, text on the left-hand side, but on the left-hand side, we have a list of folders in my project. When you open PyCharm for the first time, you're not gonna have as many folders as this because this is a lot of my various projects and things from previous semesters and, and other stuff. It's just my, my junk. But uh, everything else will be pretty, pretty close to the same. So when you're ready, to create a new file in PyCharm, what you're gonna do, and you might have a file open already that says main, you can close that, you don't need it. But what I want you to do is right click, you can right click or command click if you're Mac, on that first folder, the very top one. And then you're gonna choose new, and from that menu, you will choose Python file. And then it will open up this little box here where you can name your Python file. I'm gonna name mine a1.py. I highly recommend you use this naming scheme for all your assignments, a1, a2, et cetera, et cetera. Always ending in .py so the computer knows that it's a Python file. So if I do a1.py, then I get this Line. It should look somewhat familiar because it's very similar to what we just looked at in onlinepython.com. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's hello world. So I'm going to use the print function with my parentheses. And then I'm going to put quotes in there so that I can type a string literal and hello world. Or if I want, I can say hello Bill. Okay, now, once I have that, I can run this and see how it works. Now, there's a run menu up here, but this, if I click this run button, it will run whatever's selected here. Now, it happens to be A1, but if it's a different file and I click this, it's going to be running a different file. So the easiest way to make sure you're always running the thing that's in front of you is to right click or command click again on the code window, just anywhere in the code window. It'll pop up this box. And from that, you're going to choose run A1, which is this script. When I run that, Python's firing up here. There we go. This is the result. It's not completely different. It's a little different than the online Python. What you're going to see on the first line is a bunch of folders. Now, these may or may not look familiar to you. Yours is going to look different than mine. But what this is, if you scroll all the way to the right, you'll see that it ends in a1.py. This is the path to that file. Basically, it says, here are the directions. If you want to find where this file is on your computer, that's, these are the directions from the root directory, which is the main, main folder of your whole computer. Below that, you will see the print results. And then of course, process finished with exit code zero. Good news guys, good news. We finished with no errors. So if I had had an error in my code, you'll see I'd, if I remove that second quotation mark, Quotation marks have to come in pairs. That's just a rule. We have an opening and a closing, same with parentheses. If I remove that closing quotation mark, all of a sudden I get this red underline. That's actually PyCharm being helpful to us. And one of the reasons I want you to use PyCharm is because it's got, it, it actually analyzes the, the code that you type in on the fly. And if it detects an error or it doesn't, it sees something that doesn't work, it's gonna underline it for you. So you can fix it because right now it's easy because I only have one line of code. But if I have a, a program that is 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000 lines of code, 
and I have an error in it, how nice is it that I can scroll up and down in that program and look for those red lines or try and find that error. But there's more. If I have an error here and I run that code anyway, what I get, you can see, is exit code one, which means there's an error. But I can also see this red text here. And it says, you have an error with this code right here. And the error is a syntax error, unterminated string literal detected at line one. So I can go to line one and it says, um, unterminated string literal. So I have a string literal that is unterminated, meaning I didn't terminate it. I didn't put the closing quote on that string literal. So those error codes tell me a lot of really useful information along with the underlining. It allows me to fix my code quickly and then I can run that code and it works. So if you got exit code zero, it means you did it right. We all want to be zeros, at least in that particular sense. So how do you take this file and put it on Canvas? That's the last piece of this. So on Canvas, if I go to assignment one, right, assignment one here, here's the details for that assignment, right? Write hello world, here's the constraints. Pay attention to those for each assignment, their rules, and I will hold you to them. Please submit the complete program as a PI file. Title it a1.py to make it easier to keep track. So I have all that. I start the assignment. And down here at the bottom, there's a box for a file upload. Now, all I need to do is find that a1.py on my computer and then I can upload it. Figuring out where PyCharm keeps the files can be kind of a pain. So here's what I suggest you do. I suggest that you copy this file, not drag it, but copy it from this location to your desktop. So let me show you the steps I used to do that. Okay, so I'm going to right click or control click on the a1.py file on the left hand side where I see it. I'm going to choose open in and on my computer it's finder. If you're using an Apple computer it'll be finder. If you're using a Windows computer it will be explorer. You want to open it in one of those finder or explorer. Basically it's a window that shows that file in the folder it lives in on your computer. So I'm going to now take that and I just want to copy that file and then I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to paste that file. And that file now is copied onto my desktop. If I was to take that file and drag it from one location to the other, it's going to take it out of PyCharm and move it to my desktop. And I don't want to do that because then I can't work on it in PyCharm anymore. I want to keep a copy in, in PyCharm and just copy it to my desktop so that I can find it easily. So once I have a copy of that file on my desktop, I can go back here to Canvas. I'm going to choose the file. Let me go to my desktop, select it. And it, on my computer, at least, it, it shows shows my code, which is kind of convenient. And I'm gonna choose open. The file name should appear here. And below that, there's a space for you to put comments. So if there's something about that assignment that you want me to know, or you have a question or whatever, I, will, I can respond to those. You don't have to put anything though. And then you're gonna hit submit assignment. I don't know why I did that. This is my computer. Okay, so you can see the little confetti in celebration if you submitted it correctly. And also, you know you submitted it correctly because it says submitted, it says the date and time, and it, you, you can download a copy of the file you just submitted. If you're, if you're 
anxious about whether you submitted the right file or not. But if you name your files, A1, A2, et cetera, it's kind of easy to see that you did the right thing. And at that point you're done. If you need to resubmit it, you hit new attempt and you just go through that process again. So that is the whole process start to finish of creating A1 and submitting it via Canvas along with instructions on how to submit it via Canvas. So uh, 